Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga is a game that I've always wanted to do a challenge run on. But for those who do know the Mario & Luigi series, it is kinda common knowledge that these games are probably the easiest in the series. And even if I do play the harder remakes, it is still too easy for my liking. So I decided to spice things up a bit and make the game extremely difficult for myself by attempting to beat this game without items and battles, multi-stats, and even optional battles. Why do I do this to myself, man? God. We will be allowing gear because yes, I do want to make the game harder, but I also want to make the game possible, so please, let me have this. With that being said, the no multi-stat rule only applies to the roulette and the coffee that we can brew, not the gear that we're going to be using throughout the journey. A few problems that I do see with this challenge is that we're basically going to get one shot by everything we face because, dude, we're only going to be able to fight bosses or even mini-bosses. Sure, I can dodge every attack because technically we can do that. But to be honest, my hand-eye coordination is god-awful. So dodging from even the easiest bosses in the game might be a little difficult for me. But hey, that sounds like a skill issue. So with some practice, I'm sure I'll get better at dodging. But before getting into the challenge, I would like to know, who do you think is going to be the MVP of this challenge? Mario or Luigi? Personally, I gotta go with Luigi because let's be honest, Luigi's always going to be number one. We will be determining who the MVP is by who gets the final hit in each of our battles. But with all that being said, let's get right into this challenge. Oh cool, a funny little box. I wonder what's inside. Hello, motherfucker. Uh-oh. Emergency situation! Bruh. After seeing Mario's <clears throat> mushroom, we started our journey over at Peach's Castle, where we have a mandatory tutorial battle with Bowser. And of course, it wasn't that hard. Let's and we soon go. figured out that they stole her voice using that funny little box. And now she's dropping bombs. She's speaking in windings. Oh shit. Anyways, we were then tasked to head over to the Bean Bean Kingdom to retrieve Princess Peach's voice. And along the way, I wanted to collect some items. Now, okay, I know that one of my rules clearly state that I can't use items in battles. However, it doesn't state that I can't collect any of them to sell them for money later. Because optional battles are, ironically, not an option for me. And killing bosses, hitting blocks, and selling items are the only way for me to get coins. I need to buy gear, so I gotta play really conservatively. Because right now, your boy's gonna be broke. And I can't have that. Huh? Man, Luigi's not having a good time right now. We took our pictures and even learned the basics of battling here. Okay, I gotta be honest with you guys. I did an attempt of this before, but I did something at the very beginning to break the rules. I killed an optional Goomba. And I didn't know until the very end that I could have skipped it. I know, I know, I fucked up. And it sucks, but fuck it. Next attempt, I guess. And after killing some mandatory Goombas, we got Mario to level 2. And using the roulette, I decided that both Burrows are gonna invest in only attack. Oh wait, not attack, I guess POW. It's different in this game. I'm so used to Pokemon, oh my god. We're gonna be under leveled and everything's gonna one-shot us anyways, so yeah. There's no point in increasing anything else. Luigi's gonna be only level 1 for the first boss, so that means he's gonna have even less BP for that fight. I gotta rely on my dodging skills to beat that boss, but it's Fine, I'm skillful enough to do that, right? Right, hello? Please? Anyways, we made it to the top, but we rudely got jumped by Fafo. And of course, this guy was no problem. Now I'm gonna ram you. Cool. Thank you. Okie dokie. But he wasn't done with us though, and he literally shot down our plane. Bowser, we're hitting the tower. What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh. A lot of things. How Mario and Luigi aren't dead from that fall is beyond me. Like my guy, Mario landed on his neck. He should be dead. After doing the border jump minigame, so this is how my parents got to the US from the Philippines. I thought they swam from there. We made it to Stardust Field. Here we meet the first boss, but before fighting it, the greedy little bastard Tolstar forces us to get 100 Bean Bean coins to get Bowser out of his cannon. Help me, Step Mario, I'm stuck. We had 111 mushroom coins, but that only converts to 10 Bean Bean coins. Jesus, dude. The inflation in the Mushroom Kingdom is so damn high. For more information regarding the map around this, search up Mario Inflation if you want to learn more. Please don't actually do that. Because we can't battle enemies for money, our only option is to get coins from blocks. We do have an advantage in this game though compared to the original one. Because here, if we run from enemies, we don't accidentally throw away cash like gamblers on kick. He's exploiting money out of us, man. 
man, he could have just, I don't know, done a crypto scam or something if he really wanted money. During that, we met Totally Not Mario and Totally Not Luigi, who taught us our first bros attacks, oh, Splash Bros and Browns Bros. We could even use high and spin to traverse, which makes getting coins a lot easier. And we soon got 100 coins, but instead of freeing him like he promised, he attacked us. Of course. What the heck, man? Okay, so I know that this is the first boss battle and it should be easy, but this actually took me a few tries because my hand-eye coordination... <laughs> Kinda sucks. Like, Jesus, I could not dodge at all here. Something of note during this battle is that we are so underleveled that our bros attack actually does the same damage as a normal jump, which is not good at all. We also run out of BP quickly, so yeah, we're gonna have to find a solution for that. But other than that, this battle wasn't too bad. It took me a few attempts because I suck, but Tolstar was defeated. As soon as I made it to Huhu Village, we immediately got framed for kidnapping Prince Peasley. My guy, Luigi. I know you sim for him, but come on, boundaries. Oh, um, hold on. The reason his name is Peasley is because he's a P? Uh, even as a kid, I never noticed that. Uh, I mean, right? Are you fucking serious? Yes. What do you mean? After meeting Not Mario and Not Luigi Squared, we were told that if we wanted hammers, we gotta get hoo-hoo blocks from Hoo-Hoo Mountain. A lot of hoo-hoo, hoo-hoo, hoo <laughs> Oh my god. On our way up, we met Huhu Rose, who forces us to do some dumb minigame. But because I'm a god gamer, I did it on my first try. So then he challenges us to a battle, which took way too many attempts. Like, damn, I know I suck, but not being able to dodge these easy ass lasers is just embarrassing. I also realized that having more than one target to attack really sucks because it takes away from our main boss. But despite our horrendous performance, at least we learned Super Splash Bros and Super Bounce Bros. This is super exciting because finally, Finally, we're gonna do some decent damage. Making it to the tippy top wasn't that bad. Oh, I gotta be careful here. Okay, there's a bone, and I don't wanna get hit by that bone. Yeah. Fucking god. And here we face a boss after it hatched from an egg. Balanana. You are not the boss. Surprisingly, it didn't take that long. We even got him into Fury on our first attempt, but after a few attempts and learning his attack patterns, we easily Let's took go. him out. Small mode, small baby mode, small baby mode. Turning him into the Riz Lord Prince Peasley? Like, damn, Luigi's head over heels for this guy. And getting us the Bauha badge. I think that's how you say it. Which is pretty nice since any attack boost is very useful. Especially if we're only doing 4 damage. Like, huh? What is this baby damage? Like, seriously, a child can beat you up, Luigi. Do better, come on. I soon head back to Totally Not Mario and Totally Not Luigi Squared so we can finally get our handy dandy hammers. Is this how brain damage is experienced? Giving us a new way to annihilate our enemies. I can't wait to finally relax at the Bean Bean King. Oh, shit. We may have came a few seconds too late. Oh, I think this one's dead. That's wild. Not the elderly. What the f- Despite the place being in ruins, I will be coming back over and over again to get some new gear. Gears are basically held items that you can use to increase your attack, BP, defense, and sometimes it might even give you some positive side effects. So in Pokemon terms, gears in this game are basically held items, and the roulette are basically EVs. Anyways, we headed over to the Bean Bean Castle so we can get Princess Peach's voice back, because I think she needs that. But instead, Lady Lima forces us to unleash our inner New Yorker and we did some plumbing. Like, how did we even get here? Oh! Ah, ah, ah. Man, we don't get paid enough for this. Shit. This is why we stopped plumbing in the first place. Yo, you bitch! <laughs> what is that doing in there? Ignoring the enemies was pretty hard because of how damn narrow this place is. But we eventually made it to the end. Turns out, Lady Lima was here the whole time. So, Kakleta and Fafo with their massive brain tricked us so they could snack the Bean Star. Huh. Who would have thought? Touche, that was actually pretty smart. After confronting them about her forced labor, she wasn't having it and decided to send out Dummy Mommy to destroy us. I don't mind. I mean, of course we can't allow that to happen. And the boss wasn't too hard with the strategy I was using. Here, I decided to just full send it on her crown with Super Splash Bros and hammers. After spiking her head, Luigi would hit her in the booba with the hammer. I would use Super Bounce Bros, but uh, our will feetsies would hurt because of the pointy crown. And that really wouldn't matter though because we eventually beat her without using it. Doing it in our first attempt. Why are you poking her? I mean, I wish I was as muscular as her also, but damn Luigi, okay. Into dummy mommies, I guess. For some reason, the only way to cure her is with soda instead of medication. Sounds super American to me, but 
I. So we just head over to grab that. And just outside of the castle, Mario was given the bean badge. Pretty nice since it increases a bit of her BP. Unfortunately, Best Boy wasn't given one though. Man, they're really doing Luigi dirty like that. <laughs> so we decided to drip him out a bit. And at the shop, Luigi was given the castle badge. So now they're matching. I also got both bros the bean trousers for some extra defense. We could also make some cash by selling some items that we can't use in battle. A huge game changer since, you know, your boy is broke. I was soon greeted by the Da Vinci twins at Chateau de Chakuhuk. And I'm sure we could have just grabbed one of these barrels and we would have been fine. But no, we gotta make things harder for ourselves and grab it from the source. Of course. Eh, oh well. Wait, so what happened to Bowser's head? He probably got amnesia or something. I, I, what are you talking about? That's not Bowser. That's Rookie. Here we have a battle with Popo and Rookie. And finally, we can do double digit damage. About time, right? Well, at least if we use Bros attacks. Our strategy for this battle is just focusing on Rookie. Because if we do that, we immediately end the battle. Without even needing to touch Poopo because he's a little icky. And he just runs away anyways. This did take a bit though because of course I ran out of BP. And I had to resort to smacking their skulls with our hammers. I eventually did beat them though on our first oh, attempt no. without getting hit. Dodging Rookie's fires and even their hammers. <laughs> I mean, yeah, let's go, gamers. Further along the path, we met Totally Not Mario and Totally Not Luigi Cubed, but this time, they're French. Uh, and an armor that leeches bleats and make the pass. Oh, I'm so sorry you had to experience that. After interacting with us, they taught us how to make Luigi look up to us. Yes, they beneath me, you punk. <laughs> we even learned some new bros attacks, chopper bros and knockback bros. All it took was getting hit in the head with a hammer. Huh. Maybe I should try that out in real life. Maybe it'll get me a little taller. We now have the ability to collect beans. These will come handy in the future. But deep within the woods, the bros were tasked by the great deco tree to get some fruit. Man, can't you just do that yourself? You're a tree, come on. God, lazy ass bitch. The white and the purple bean fruits were easy enough, but obtaining the red fruit was a little different because here we actually got to fight a boss for it. I totally understand why they got mad at us though. Like, sh Ew. Why would we even do that? Wiggler only took me like 3 attempts to knock it out. This was really annoying though because before doing any damage on it, we gotta hit every other body part to weaken him. Not only that, when we do have a chance to smack him in the head, we only do like 20-ish damage and even less with Luigi. So yeah, this battle took a long time. How are you not dead, motherfucker? But thanks to Chopper Bros, this goes down pretty easily. And eventually, we're able to knock him out without getting oh, ourselves no. hit. Because I'm a goat, you know? He's crying. Good. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. I'm goaded with the sauce. I'm so good. During this battle, I tried getting super knockback bros and super chopper bros, but I guess it wasn't enough. What I do appreciate about only fighting bosses is that I'm guaranteed at least one level every time I beat one. And yes, I'm severely underleveled, but at least I can practice my hand-eye coordination every time I fight these bosses. Especially since it takes so damn long to beat them. Finally, we got the red fruit so we could snag some of that chocola to heal the queen bean. Again, it's a little weird that this is the only thing that can heal that, but here we are. Of course, Bubbles and the Chocolinator does not appreciate that. And they're not gonna get taken without a fight. Heck, they already beat Poffo and Rookie. But let's be honest, it's just a pile of liquid, so it shouldn't be that bad. Gun! <laughs> <laughs> Despite him having a Glock... It was really easy to dodge it, and I was able to spam Chopper Bros and Knockback Bros. I did a hefty amount of damage on it, and pretty soon, I learned Super Chopper Bros, which is pretty nice. Something really annoying about this battle though is that Bubbles can heal him by telling mid-jokes. Like, come on! Stop! Why are you like this? Stop healing him! Of course, I ran out of BP, but eventually Bubbles stopped showing up, so all I had to do is crush his head with our hammers to finally knock him out. <laughs> Imagine bringing a gun to a hammer fight and still losing! After the fight, the Chocolinator drops the Bubbles badge, which is amazing because we can finally recover some BP during boss battles. Sure, we can only get like 2 BP per turn, but at least it's something. And with this, we can use more bros attacks than we currently can right now. So you're telling me, you've been telling jokes for a thousand years, and this is the best you could come up with? I think you should find another job, because comedy is not for you, man. After curing the queen with our dirty mouth, Chocola, ugh. We can now explore around the Bean Bean Kingdom because trust me, there's a lot of items that we can grab to help us throughout our journey. So before heading to Woohoo University, I upgraded our armor, I'm fucking broke. Giving Luigi the charity badge, collected some Who Beans, grabbed some items to sell. What, what the? the 
Fuck. Like, okay, dream. That's kind of mean. <laughs> That's fine. Stop. And even brewed some coffee at a newly opened cafe. Because I made some new blends, I was able to grab the bonus ring, the greed wallet for some more money after bosses, and the float spring after getting key beans from mini games. This allows the bro who holds it to stay in the air for a bit. I like the float spring a lot because I suck major balls at dodging, and this could actually help with that. Later, we'll get even more accessories, but for now, they're not available. I also explored the overworld because now a bunch of stuff are finally opened up to us. And during that, I found another number one trousers, which makes Mario a speedy glass cannon. I'm gonna have to avoid every attack now, but once again, we're basically one shot anyways, so I'm gonna need all the power I can get. So after all that, I felt confident enough to head into the Hooniversity. Avoiding every enemy was so f***ing annoying though because of how many there were here, and the place was just so small, like come on, I need a breeder here, please. But other than that, this place was relatively easy to explore. God gamer, never mind. Thank you. And we eventually made it to the back rooms, where we faced Kakleda and Fafo once again, trying to awaken the Bean Star. Apparently, Peach's voice was so bad that it got pissed off and flew away. Being butthurt, Kakleda challenges us to a fight, and we gladly accepted. Ah, uh, I gotta restart. <laughs> sucks. This took us a few attempts because for some reason, I couldn't dodge her black hole attack. And it doesn't help that when I fall in, we get affected with heavy G, which delays our attacks and our jumps, making it really hard to win this battle. And to make things worse, in her second phase, she basically just spams this black hole attack. Like, please, please think of something original. While I'm over here spamming knockback bros and chopper bros, not doing anything different, yep. <laughs> when she does miss her attacks though, we're basically unstoppable, doing massive damage with bros attacks. And even if we do run out of BP, this time, we can just use the hammers to recover some. Thank you, Bubbles. That batch is phenomenal. Jesus. Can you stop? She had so much HP, but eventually, we were able to knock her down. And in that process, Luigi learned super knockback bros. Yeah! Easy. Ooh, I'm such a gamer. Oh my god, I'm so... What the fuck? 69. <laughs> nice. We are giving amazing back-to-back -back items because not only did we get the bubble badge, something that recovers BP every turn, once we defeat Kakleta, we can also grab the Batware, which on god is endgame armor. With this, Mario's given three shields. Yeah, you heard me. Three shields. That means we can get hit three times without any repercussions, making the challenge even more manageable. Oh yeah, and she also dropped a lot of money because of the greed wallet. So yeah, boy's not broke anymore. So what do you guys want. I'll give you guys like a super nut or something. I don't know. As I made it to the basement, my natural habitat, we retrieved the bean star, but we also see Popo and Rookie stopping us from grabbing it. Ma who do you think you are? They challenged us for the ownership of the bean star. And the outcome was pretty similar to what happened last time. Even with their own bros attacks, we were able to beat them pretty quickly, mainly focusing on Rookie to make Popo run away. Despite beating them though, they were sore losers and held on to the bean star, splitting it into four pieces. Thanks guys, look what you did now. After a massive fall resulting in brain damage, we made it to Oho Oasis, where we terrorized the civilians nearby. Die you puny human. I missed. <laughs> Oh my- What did you do? What did you do? During that, we learned Thunderhand and Firebrand, opening up the overworld even more. Now though, we gotta go through the worst part of the game. Like, I know we're underwater, but come on, we're so damn slow! Okay, that's a little terrifying. Jesus. <laughs> we soon head over to the Bean Bean Kingdom again, and once again, we made our way to the gear store. I immediately bought the Bros Batch, which increases 3 PP instead of 2. Yup, that'll be going on Mario, thank you. And side note, for some reason, I didn't buy 2. I just bought 1 and gave Luigi the Bubbles Badge. Yeah. I'm pretty stupid. Anyways, I gave Luigi the safety slacks and headed over to the Bean Bean Airport to be security for Princess Peach, or PP, when she gets here. Before she gets here, we were tasked to get rid of the piranha plants to make Princess Peach's land safer. Okay, why the f*** is this even here, what? Okay, easy enough, and we don't need to kill them, which is pretty nice. But after getting rid of all of them, Mama Piranha spawns in the middle to speak to the manager about her unalive children. And uh, this boss? was f***ing annoying. This took me so many attempts, you don't even know. At first, I tried brute forcing it by attacking its mom, but her children would just heal up all the damage we would do on her. And of course, it doesn't help that, I don't know, we're underleveled. She also has so much damn HP, so that's great. Sounds like a skill issue to me. Shut up! 
So in my latter attempts, I decided to kill one of her children and leave one in the field to prevent her from turning blue. God, <laughs> that's a wild sentence, killing her children? Oh god. A lot of her moves were relatively easy to dodge, but there was just one move that I couldn't dodge for some reason. But once I got the timing down, I was able to stay alive long enough to kill her. And after a bunch of bros attacks and thunder from Luigi, we finally took her down. Jesus, f about time. This took way too long. Oh well, Princess Peach made it here safely though, and we head back to the Bean Bean Kingdom. But instead of talking bomb, she has her voice back. Oh please, take her voice again. I don't want to hear Mario over and over again, please. Turns out, she knew what Kekleto was gonna do from the very beginning. So Birdo was planted there to get her voice taken instead. Okay, that's pretty smart. But let's be honest, there's no way she thought of that. She literally gets kidnapped over and over again by the same guy. You gotta be kidding me. Now she wants to be escorted through a desert where she's prone to getting kidnapped. Oh god. Same here, Luigi. I feel you. But before exploring Tihi Valley, I headed into this suspicious cave to get a hammer upgrade. God, uh, they, they really should not be doing that with their head though. Jesus. Pretty nice because now I can get one of the best bros attacks. Well, in this game at least. Swing bros. We'll be using this until the very end of the game. <sighs> Now we gotta help Peach get to Little Fungi Town. Initially, I was afraid that I had to fight enemies to prevent Peach from getting kidnapped, but after watching the YouTuber Calendar Man's Minimum Kill Challenge, I realized that once Peach gets kidnapped above land, I can get her out and the enemy just despawns. Just like that, without needing to kill them. So these battles are still optional, thankfully. So if you happen to be watching this, Calendar Man, thank you. That information is really useful. God. Now you see why I hate Peach in this game? Not only did she force us to do an escort mission with her, which okay, it's pretty bad, but manageable, but we also almost lost a challenge because of her. You can't get worse than this, boys. Eventually, we made it to the end to Little Fungi Town, but oh no 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 no. It can't be that easy. Even The Rock wants a piece of Peach. So yeah, we gotta stop him from grabbing her. It took a bit to beat him because I really suck at dodging his attacks, I'm gonna be completely honest. Especially when he goes into Fury. This guy is relentless. Even though we have badges restoring our BP, we still have to alternate between hammers and bros attacks to beat him. Because still, our damage output is just too small. Whenever he's not blocking his head, I would try my best to hit it with either swing bros or knockback bros. And when he's in his little baby poopy form, I would look closely and make sure that I'm hitting the one with the orange in its mouth. Because of course, I don't want to waste any BP on the one that doesn't have the orange. This took a while, but after some phenomenal dodging, we were able to finally take him out, Let's getting us go. a stone slacks and even learning super swing bros. Luigi now has endgame armor, and the armor is basically the same thing that Mario has, you know, 3 shields per attack, which is perfect because I need that right now. And finally, Funnily enough, after this battle, Luigi got 2 levels compared to Mario's 1. Kinda weird, I don't understand that, but whatever. We made it to Little Fungi Town. So after that hard battle, we decided to chill at the arcade. Time to get my gamer on. And after getting a new high score, we were gifted the intervention- <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> Whatever, they gave us this funny little mushroom. I don't know, that mushroom seems pretty angry. Yo, you probably shouldn't- <sighs> Okay. <laughs> Uh, so apparently he has bean fever, and if we don't cure that, he will turn into a bean. But Luigi's here to save the day. But of course, he was too scared to do that, so we had to gaslight him into thinking he was Mario. Apparently that was enough to get him to go. He headed into Guafau Ruins to find a cure. We played a few minigames and totally completed this baby puzzle in one attempt. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I'm lost in the sauce too right now. I don't know what I'm doing. To eventually get some of that crabby grass. Hopefully this is enough to save Mario because please, I need my bros attack back. During that, Kekleto revealed that she was back. And this time, she even kidnapped Princess Peach. Oh no, who would have thought? This is like her 8th time getting kidnapped in this game. Granted, those times were my fault though. <laughs> Okay, I know, I said, as a kid, Bowsette scared me. But Bowsette is basically Bowser with titties, so... Smash. Bowletta on Zoom then tasks us to get the pieces of the bean star for her. So we just head out to do that. Oh, L Luigi, chill. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In Tihi Valley, we found the first bean star on this abandoned ship. It could have been that easy, but Dingus and Doofus had to get it first. So we head in to confront them. Sans? So after completing a minigame, we got a V card. <laughs> Yeah! And getting sense out of the wall, we continued on with our long journey for the Beanstar, ending up in Guajar Lugan. Lugan? Lagoon? What? 
And here, apparently, they give out hand massages. I've never heard of that before, but sure, let's try it out. In here, we meet not Mario, not Luigi, uh, by quadrates. But this time, they're women. And hot? What was that? Nothing, nothing. And because of the Thunderhand and the Firebrand, they were willing to give us a happy ending. Where we learned how to set people on fire and electrocute people's spines. Great, another torture method. But hey, the more arson, the better. Man, don't you hate it when your beaches have death contractions? Alright, Yeah, like what the fuck? Eventually, after all these puzzles, we made it to Hermit the Third, who has the first Beanstar piece. And my guy really attacked us because he wasn't having all the attention anymore. God. Attention whore. But this fight wasn't a challenge at all, and it only took me like one attempt. My strategy here was breaking its right claw because I don't want him to attack Mario. He's my main attacker, so I want him alive. And after breaking that, I instantly gave him brain damage by going for the head. I would spam Swing Bros and Thunder Bros in hopes to drop his defense, but somehow I didn't get that throughout the entire battle. Well, bad RNG on my part, I guess. And whenever he would cover up in his shell to heal, I would commit some of that arson to get him out. It does heal his right claw though, but all I need to do is break it again. This took a while because I'm only doing like 20 or 30 damage per turn and he has so much HP. But after repeating the process, we eventually took him out. First try, I'm easy. Let's fucking go. Winning us a battle and getting us a first piece of the beam. Star. Back in the ocean, we found a block that contains the Wonder Badge. It automatically recovers 3 BP per turn, so I'll be giving that to Mario and Luigi can just keep the Bros Badge. It's a small increase, but any upgrade in a challenge like this is pretty nice. Come on, go get it Luigi. Use your hammer and get it. For the second Beanstar piece, all we needed to do was become fashion designers. This was extremely easy and it only took me like 5 minutes to complete. No fighting included. On our way to grab the third Beanstar piece, we head back to Chocola Woods. Here, we were able to knock down this big ass turtle to uncover the restricted area. Apparently, this arena was here this whole time, so we just decided to play around a bit. And we were so good that the bros got acknowledged by the almighty wrinkles. Allowing them to explore the back rooms, which has the Beanstar piece in it. But before snagging it, Popo beat us to it. Yeah, no, we're not gonna let that happen. Finders keepers? Nah, nah, nah. We're, we'll beat you for it. <laughs> This fight ended faster than it started. After using Thunder Bros to lower his defense, our Swing Bros was able to do double the damage. So yeah, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it's like mine. Beating him into oblivion and getting us a third piece of the Bean Star. For the last piece, we headed to Yoshi Theater, but Mr. Um actually really does not want us here. But luckily, Bottle was on our side, and he tasked us to get some neon eggs for him. Washed up middle-aged men such as these could never get neon eggs. Washed up? Yeah, do it. Do it, buddy. Fuck you. Aight, that's it. We're proving him wrong. Getting the bean fruits for Yoshi shouldn't be that bad because throughout our entire journey, I've been slowly collecting them just for this one mission. So now, I only have a few more left, and one of them was eaten by this one piranha mini boss. This could only be beaten by Luigi, so yeah, no bros attacks, but it wasn't that bad. And if anything, this is just a huge inconvenience. So after just spamming Thunder, he goes down oh, easily, no, no. getting us a bean fruit and even saving Luigi's boyfriend in the process. <laughs> After grabbing Ebi bean fruit, we headed back to the Yoshi Theater so we can feed the hungry Yoshi there, getting us all the neon eggs. I really don't want to touch them though because, quite literally, they just shat them out. But these eggs were a good substitute for the piece. So with a little trade, we got the last piece of the bean star, restoring the bean star in its entirety. Bauletta from her red 3DS then tasked us to go to Joke's end to deliver the bean star. But we got a trick up our sleeves. You could have you could have at least tried making it more convincing. The bean star looks sleepy. He looks EP as f my guy. Oh uh, well, let's go see if they fall for this. But before that, let's go get our last hammer upgrades. Oh my god, they are going crazy! Chill, chill! Now that our hammer is gold, we can explore every inch of the overworld. Further along the cave, we can get our final bros attack. Cyclone bros. This is pretty nice, but with a certain item, it's gonna be overpowered as hell. With our golden hammers, we can grab a few more coffees. And with this coffee, we can get the rest of our accessories. You know, accessories that can give us even more damage than we do before. All I need is woo beans, which is most commonly obtained by killing enemies. But of course, we can't do that because of the rules I'm given. However, there's actually 
two ways for us to snag them without killing. One of the ways is using super swing bros on enemies who are higher level than us. This can allow us to steal from them without actually killing them. But this kind of ruins the whole purpose of the whole no optional battle rule. So yeah, let's just scrap that. The other way is totally ethical and only Luigi is suffering here. So after turning him into a surfboard and going onto this funny little island, we're able to play a surfing minigame that gives us 1-2 to two woo beans if we either play horribly wrong or play extremely perfect. So after playing a bit and grabbing enough beans, we head back to make a blend. Professor E got from this Discord then gave us a great force, and this is fucking amazing. This item alone doubles our damage that we can take and receive, and it's so overpowered that I'm gonna be giving it to Mario, cause it doesn't matter if we take any damage since we have shields. These barriers literally protect us from attacks. Isn't this futuristic? Unfortunately, not anymore, because now I see this on a daily basis. Oh god. Before heading into Joke's End, I spent like an hour surfing to make some coffee, because now I can increase both Mario's and Luigi's attacks for free without needing to fight any bosses anymore. But it is time consuming so I'll limit it a bit, leaving Mario at 122 power and Luigi at 107 power. So Joke's End. This dungeon wasn't too bad and I was able to make it to the end pretty quickly, but something really traumatizing happened to me here. God, you're so stubborn. This is why no girls would ever like you. Whoa, whoa, what the heck, man? God, she's ruthless. Okay, so we made it to the end and I thought it was gonna be pretty chill. I thought I was gonna grab Princess Peach, give them the bean star, but nah, no. Jojora tried hooking us up with her friend. Uh, I think we're okay, thank you. And they didn't like that, so they started a fight with us. Tahina even kissed Luigi. Ma'am, this is harassment, please stop. Whoa, 134? This battle was pretty easy because now we're doing massive damage. Countering Jojora will allow us to focus on Tahina, and that's awesome because like Popo and Rookie, after beating Tahina, Jojora would just run off. So in one attempt, we ended this fight pretty quickly. That's kind of brutal actually. Yeah, she literally called us bitchless, so I really don't- I could- <laughs> I don't feel too bad. I tried giving Fafo the fake bean star, but he saw through the ruse. And not only did Kekleta took the real bean star, but she also kept Princess Peach. Like bro, that's not what we agreed on. We gotta do something fast, but hear me out guys. What if we put Luigi in a dress? No, 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 that's, that's not what I mean. Surprisingly, they were stupid enough to believe that Luigi was Princess Peach. And we were able to retrieve the bean star while keeping the princess safe. So in this part of the game, I'm actually really proud of Luigi. Like, damn, that's pretty brave. But enough of that. All he needs to do now is land safely and... Oh, oh my god. And just when I was praising him too, come on, man. Oh my god, his neck should be busted, dude. Oh well, we gotta rescue Luigi. But while we do that, we run into Pupo for one last time. But this time, he has a new rookie. You know, I'm, I'm very confident. I'm not even gonna save here. Rookie and Birdo is not a hard battle. Let's be f***ing for real. And in our first... Oh, 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 and in their second attempt, we were able to beat oh, them Yogi. by, of course, focusing Birdo with Swing Bros and Cyclone Bros. Can't believe I, I lost to her. Yeah, run away. Ho Jokes aside, I had a harder time with this Popo fight than any other Popo fight I had in this challenge. Like, damn, bro. Rookie won. You gotta do better. I decided to play a few more minigames in order to get the rest of the accessories I need to complete this challenge. Once I got 12 woo beans and a couple of he beans, we finally head back to the kingdom to make some coffee. Oh god. Oh god, they're ruining the kingdom again. Eh, oh well, let's go get some coffee. Chococo. Chuck. Chico? Chococino. 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 We soon made the two new blends that we needed to get the accessory, getting us a cobalt necktie. This doubles our stash. And if you don't know what stash is this late into the video, I mean fair because I'm only increasing power on the roulette, it's basically something that doubles our crit chance. I'll be giving this to Luigi because with Cyclone Bros, this has so many chances to crit bosses. Obviously, ending their lives even faster. Also, in the gear shop, we bought the Sarge Badge, which gives us 5 BP per turn. Small upgrade, but hey, it's pretty nice. Eventually, we went to the castle to talk about the situation at hand. Dude, this castle is not taking any damage. That's crazy. Oh, never mind. I take that back. Our only real option is to invade the castle and ask them really kindly if they can stop bombing the place. I don't think Luigi is too fond of that plan, but oh well, you're coming with me. In Ho Ho Village, we asked Bad Blah 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 Dan to fly us over to Bowser's castle. You know what, close enough. The final dungeon of our journey. Little did we know, Bowletta had company of her own. 
the Koopalings. In the castle, we gotta do everything we've learned throughout our journey. High, spin, hammer, thunder, fire, tickle. Wait, what? And while proceeding, the Koopalings would jump us one by one, but they weren't that hard to deal with. I would say they were all easy to fight, but I actually ended up losing to Iggy. Damn, I suck at dodging. You would think that after all this time, I would get better, but nah, I guess not. Sure, I beat him with Luigi, but I want both bros to get some EXP. And during our second attempt, Luigi learned Super Cyclone Bros. Nice! Even more damage. It also showed that the Cobalt Necktie may come in clutch for Bowletta. Despite him trying to change her stats, it didn't matter because we ended up beating him. One down, six to go. Again, I suck at dodging, so I ended up losing to yet another Koopaling, this time being Morton. But after, uh, getting good, he was easily taken down with a barrage of Swing Bros and Slycon Bros. Two down, five to go. Lenny is next. Let me look closely. Oh, it's you. Fuck! But despite him being able to duplicate himself, I was able to tell which one was real by looking into his eyes and seeing his deepest fears. So yeah, he was actually easy, only taking me one attempt to beat him. Imagine getting ratioed by the Koopalings before you. Like, come on, man, at least get one victory over me. Oh well, three down? Four to go. Next is Ludwig, or Ludwig for you damn Americans. But we didn't get a chance to attack, and instead, he ambushed us with a barrage of attacks to counter. So all I needed to do was dodge them, which I suck at. Surprisingly, I survived it though, and I was able to return the spirit bomb back at him. Oh, poop. Roy introduced a new gimmick to our fights, the ticking time bomb. Basically, if we don't beat them within this many turns, we will be blown up. Duh. And we'll get an automatic game over. Luckily for us though, we do so much damage at this point, and at the start of the battle, we even stunned him for a bit. I didn't even know I could do that. Oh my god, we gave him a concussion. So yeah, taking him down was pretty easy. And after the fight, we obtained a Bowser Fang. This badge basically gives us infinite TMs, because if I do- Wait, did I say TMs? <laughs> I meant infinite bros attacks. Because if I get an excellent rating on my bros attacks, it immediately restores all my BP. So yeah, I'm taking that. This whole time, I've been complaining about BP, but finally, we have a solution for it. Thank God. Five down, two to go. Before getting to Windy, I had a slight problem. There's a room in this castle where if you don't fight the enemies, it'll be very difficult to progress through the dungeon. And obviously, we don't want to fight them. But as they touch us, they'll break the barrel. Calendar Man had the same problem in this part of the challenge, but I guess I got lucky here because within a few minutes, I was able to despawn them to juke them to press the button. I really didn't want to end the challenge here, so whew, thank god. Anyways, we made it to Windy, smacked her head with her hammers, and the battle commenced. Like like Lenny, she was able to duplicate herself, but because I'm goaded with the sauce, I know where she was the entire time, only attacking the real one and taking her down pretty quickly. Six down, one to go. Larry for some reason just wanted to play tennis. So instead of fighting, we settled this civilly with a tennis match. Nah, just kidding. My guy, this isn't Mario Tennis. Get the hell out of here. We took him to the cleaners and ended things pretty quickly, finally putting an end to the Koopalings. But now we have a few more fights left. So let's head to the final room to end Kekleta once and for all. Before facing her though, we gotta go through Fafo, her simp, the guy who rammed us in the very beginning. My eyes! My eyes! So of course, I kinda want some revenge. First, he decided to hide in this machine, so to get him out, I had to use Chopper Bros to annoy him. This ended up overheating the machine, so when that happens, we're allowed to attack Fafo straight on. Maybe you should've put an air conditioner in there, my guy. Two bros move, we're able to put him into Fury. Goes to show how much damage we're doing now. Like, damn, I know we have the Great Force, but come on, we're underleveled. So after getting him out of the machine once again, a few more bros moves were able to Let's knock go. him out. Despite this being one of the last few bosses, this was very easy. He was still alive though, so Prince Peasley had to finish him off once and for all. Okay, so I know I said I was gonna face Bowletta now, but before facing her, there's a badge that I forgot I needed to collect. So after getting out of Bowser's castle, I decided, fuck it, why not take some pictures again? Because this is highly necessary, and made my way to Guajar Lagoon. Because here, if we replace the Beanstar that we took from Hermie with Spangle, we were gifted with the Sofo Bros badge. It's basically Bowser's Fang giving us infinite BP at the cost of some POW, but that's fine. With all this preparation, Despite being underleveled, do you guys think I'll be able to complete this challenge? Comment down your predictions in the comment section down below, and let's finish off Bowletta once and for all. Do we really have to fight her? It's fucking terrifying, bro. Bowser, it doesn't have to be like this. We can just talk this out. 
Come on, Bowser. This isn't you. Power through, man. Come on. Unfortunately, Talk No Jutsu didn't work, and Bowletta forces us into battle. But with everything we've prepared, she was extremely easy. And this time, there wasn't a time limit. So we can take our time annihilating her with our hammers. And after spamming Swing Bros and Super Cyclone Bros, we oh, saved the day. Is what I would say if she didn't cheat and attack when it wasn't her turn. The f I had a shield. Like, what the heck, man? I thought we were following the rules here. And my belly. She sucked us up, and now we're in Bowser's belly, face to face with the true final boss, Kakleta's soul. And because of that bob bomb, we're stuck at 1 HP for the rest of the fight. We can't use items in battle, so we can't heal. If she breaks all our shields, we're basically fodder. We have no HP, so we can't survive anything. And all we can do is rely on our dodging skills, and the shields we have as a crutch to beat her. Of course, she's the final boss, so she'll be difficult to beat. But with the bros together, I'm sure we'll be able to do this. Even though this is technically my second attempt, I still had a hard time with this battle. There's just two moves in particular that I just suck at dodging. One where she swings her arms like a maniac, and one where she commits arson. I just couldn't get the timing right, and she kept whooping my ass because of that. But I'm stubborn as hell. So after being persistent and kinda getting her attacks patterned down, we finally got the attempt we needed. Of course, I suck at dodging her fire hand move, so instantly I would break her left arm first. I really don't want to deal with that. Next, I would try to break her head with Mario, so Luigi has a free turn at her heart, using Super Cyclone Bros before she gets an attack on us. Oh my god, that was nutty. After exposing her heart, even when she does heal her three body parts, I would just well on the heart because that's the main attraction. That's the only way we can beat her, so we gotta knock her out instantly. Within a few turns, she would then cover her heart, which is a little annoying, but all we need to do is break all her body parts again so we can expose the heart. Eventually, we would get her into Fury, giving her more attack, more speed, and more power. So we gotta be very careful here. Crit, crit, crit. Not crit, another one. Nice, another one. We do about 300 damage per turn, so I felt like we were very close to beating her. But at this point, Mario's all out of barriers, so he can't take a hit anymore. And I was really scared of losing here. But after all those crits from the Cyclone Bros, with one final knockback bros from Luigi, we knocked her out for good, and finally completed this challenge. Oh, hell yeah! Fire, you bitch! Fire. Oh my oh, god, you skill me. issue. You got fing destroyed, bro. Oh my god, that was crazy, man. Once I got gear that helped us with our horrible dodging and our limited BP, this challenge became very manageable. Being under leveled kind of became irrelevant towards the end, and we ended up at level 25. But with that being said, can I beat Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga with all these unnecessary rules? Yes, yes I can. And I feel like my hand-eye coordination got better because of this challenge. So if you guys have any suggestions on what challenges I should do next, either Mario or Pokemon, either is fine, please comment them down below. I would love to hear it. But other than that, thank you guys for watching me suffer and watch me suffer here in these challenges. I'm sure you guys would enjoy it because these are interesting challenges. Like who would have thought of doing an anime challenge? So yeah, I'll see you guys there. Bye bye.